and then we'll do the breakout next door as we did last week. We'll start with Rob, Brendan, good to see you. Thank you. Um, look, I'm really sorry to hear about the news of what happened up in Scotland with your, with your family home. Mm. Um, it must have been really hard for you and the family. What, what do you want to say? Is there anything you want to tell us about that or anything you'd like to comment about it? No, it's obviously something that, that's not nice to, you know, for for any sort of family to go through, of course. Um, as I said, it gave the, the girls a fright. Um, however, I think the only thing I want to say on it is that, it, it, that probably the last 10 days is, there's been a lot around my move to here and, and obviously the, the, the events of the last couple of days. But I don't want to detract from, you know, what well, we're in an amazing time as a family in, in Scotland, in Glasgow in particular. You know, the... Uh, the people there were amazing the experiences that we had there on and off the field uh, will live with us and uh, we're not going to let something like this here or some of the reaction of the last 10 days um, cloud any of that so um, so yeah we uh, we dealt with it there's been a great support out there for us um, and uh, like I say they're both fine and, and, and safe which is important we'd been told that you'd lost a lot of your winners medals and your trophies and that sort of thing is, is that right? Yeah, so we'll have to try and get some more. <laughs> Good man. The other question I have for you was about Lee Congerton. I don't know whether you've seen there's some reports suggesting that you might quite like him to come and join you from Celtic down here. Um, of course, Eduardo Macy is in that role here, but his contract's up in the summer. What are the what are the chances of, of Lee Congerton coming and joining you here at some point in the future, do you think? Well, there's nothing to add to that really I think the, of course there's always speculation because I brought Lee into to Celtic you know our relationship goes back a long way you know he's very good at what he does but uh, but like you say Eduardo was in, in his position here Lee's working at Celtic and like you say there's lots of speculation around lots of um, whether it's staff or players but um, but no, it's not something that's uh, a focus for now What have you learned so far about your team? You've had the first full week of training with them and obviously yeah. that first game as well the defeat to Watford what have you learned in that time I think from the game itself I think that probably um, what maybe has already been seen by, by the people that obviously watch the team for, for for a lot longer than what I have of course there's a there's been an issue around conceding early goals so that's something that we, we need to eradicate from, from our game um, and then of course the uh, in between that some good moments of play and then uh, we just didn't quite manage the game at the end um, and sometimes that'll happen especially when you have a, a young group of players but I have to say the uh, I've been really enthused by by working with them you know they, um, they're a fantastic group they really care they're really honest I know when I came into here and I was asked lost lots of questions about the actual uh, squad and how strong they are and what a tough dressing room it is but I've not found that at all. I've found a bunch of players that want to get better, that want to improve. Uh, they know that the training's intense from this week, uh, as work that we've had, but they've coped with it very well. They're only going to get better. They're only going to improve. In this process that we're in, over time, they, they, they will feel the benefits of that. So, uh, so yeah, we've had a really, really good week's training, uh, covered different aspects of, of how we want to play going forward and uh, like I said I'm really excited now about the game uh, on Saturday at home It's something that a couple of players have said to us as well that they found training very intense mm. What are your methods? Explain to us a little bit of what you've been doing this week if it's not giving too much of a game plan away No, it's based on, Obviously we, we reflect on the game from um, reflect on the game from the weekend but I'm a very much a strength based coach so I work on the, on the strength of the players what we have and um, of course, there's certain profiles that maybe in the summer we'll, we'll, we can look at that we think can can help improve the team. But with the players that we have now, the uh, it's just creating that mindset and intensity in our training that from that very first whistle you uh, you're focused and that you're ready to work. And like I say, the players have responded really well to that. You know, fundamentally, uh, you know, my basic rules have always been in, in the game is that we're always uh, trying to recover the ball as quickly as we can to create opportunities and uh, and then be able to play in whatever phase of the game you're in whether it's counter-attack or possession so uh, so the process we just work on every day and like I say the, the players have been absolutely magnificent you know in terms of their attitude to that and their focus and just their 
general willingness to learn. So, uh, so it's been great. You're right. There have been a lot of rumours around. One of them, one of them concerns Alfredo Morelos um, and whether you'd be interested in bringing him here. Um, would you? I think someone's trying to wind someone up, bro. I think. Do you think? But uh, yeah, listen. I never, I never will comment on speculation on on any player. My focus is with the players we have now. You know, the terrific bunch. We want to help and improve them and see where we can get to and where we're at by the end of the season. And then, of course, our our planning to to help the squad uh, will, will take place obviously before the end of the season, and then we can improve it then. With that in mind, though, are you already talking to the guys in charge of recruitment about your ideas and the sort of players you're looking for, or is it a bit too early for that? No, no, no. I think that uh, looking at the squad, I think we, I understand where where the team needs improvement, um, and of course we'll look at the squad over the course of the the remainder of the season just to see how much uh, we can take from the guys that's already here. But um, but I think each year you you want to improve. I think that's important. You know, to succeed, it's it's a constant. You know, you always have to be looking to improve, and that's something that we'll do in the summer. Um, team news: how, How's Jamie Vardy first and foremost? Yeah, he, he's fine. He obviously took a a bad knock. Jamie had a couple of stitches in his his tongue as well. Where he'd, uh, um, you know, says he'd, he'd obviously part of the collision that he had last weekend. But uh, but he's fine. He's trained very well, and uh, you've got another twenty four hours to go. But he, he'll be fine for the weekend. Stitches in his tongue. Did he actually bite his own tongue then from the impact? I'm not sure. No, I think it was just more through the collision and, and like I say, uh, hasn't stopped him talking, man. <laughs> really does. Yeah. Uh, anybody else struggling? No, no, they're all all fit and well and and, and uh, ready to play. Good stuff. Did you see um, Cashmere Michael's goal that he scored in training that the, the club have put out? It's probably at the other end of the training ground from where you were, but it was a bit special. What was it? I haven't seen it. Have you not seen I haven't it? Haven't seen it. I, I, I tell you, listen, I, I'm so glad he's here. He's a wonderful goalkeeper. I think he, he all the tools that he has in terms of how I want to play the game. You know his distribution is important. You know whether it's short, long, um, and once he finds the you know the rhythm of how we play, he, he's going to be a, a big, big talent for us. But uh, I haven't seen it, but I, I'm sure I'll, I'll be showing it now. It's a shame. It's a bit special. He flicks it over his head and then lobs the keeper in training. Okay. Well, hopefully it can stop them as well. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. the next five games are all against teams in the bottom half of the table mm. um, I don't know whether you look at that and think that's an opportunity or whether you think actually this is, these are teams that are going to be extra tough because you know they're in the, the realms of, of a possible relegation battle mm. my focus is always in the next game it's, I know it's a mantra that uh, gets rolled out but it really is that you know I think all games are very difficult to forecast you know, people will look at chunks of five games and think, right, you can gain points here, and you never know what the other team is going to bring to the game. You know, my focus has purely been on Fulham. You know, Scott's taken over there, and uh, they had a good performance last weekend, so he'll want to continue with that. So, uh, and, and my experiences of, of the Premier League and, and, and in any league, you really can only focus on your next game. And you have to give the respect to every team that you play, no matter where they are, and in particular in the Premier League, because it's such a demanding league. You know, you can never look at Fulham and think, right, they're they're down towards the bottom and it's an easy game, because that's where you get unstuck. So you have to respect every opponent, but also go into every game without any fear, and that's what we intend to do. What do you make of Scott Parker? And has he got the tools it takes to, be, to become a top manager, do you think? Yeah, 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 I believe so. I know Scott well. He's... I first worked with him at Chelsea when I was there and um, we, um, uh, we, we've we spoken a number of times. Um, but uh, yeah, he's he, he's done his work as well. You know, he, he's obviously had a fantastic career as a player, gone behind the scenes, done some work at Tottenham and working with the youth players and uh, and he's always been a good thinker of the game, Scott. Um, and uh, and like I say, I'm sure he'll, uh, I'm sure he'll do very well. Top man, thank you. <coughs> thank you. Hi Brendan. Hi. Um, <clears throat> forgive me on the on the issue that the the burglary north of the border. You have my um, condolences as to what's happened. I wonder whether you've had to look at your security at all. As it what down here? Yeah. No. No. I, I've never had a problem wherever I've went. So um, of course there's uh, it's been a, it's an unfortunate incident. You know it's it's sad. Like I said, for the the girls to have someone to. To come into the room and they're sleeping, it's 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 horrendous, really. Um, but no, I, I just made sure they were secure up there, 
Um, we're looking to buy a home here in, in, in Leicester and like as I said the, they will move down very soon and, uh, and like I say we'll throw our life into into here and, uh, and I look forward to that It must take some incredible mental strength to be able to focus on your job and a game that's coming up of course quickly for you when when you've had this to deal with how have you found the strength to do that? Yeah I'm, I'm fine of course you, you never want it to happen and like as I said when I when I got the call the early hours of the morning, of course you, you worry about their safety and you want to make sure that your family's fine. And um, but the reaction from lots of people have been been great. I've, we've been given great support. And like I say, I one of my friends in, in Scotland, Lord Hockey, who you know when I rang him straight away, he um, was straight on to uh, making sure that, you know Charlotte and and Lola were, were secure and the house was secure and. Uh, so that's been a great comfort for us. So, uh, so I thank him for that. But, uh, but yeah, I'm I'm always very focused on on the football as well. So it, it wouldn't detract from my work. I hope they're okay. Um, the King Power Stadium, your first, it'll be your first experience yeah. as a manager. I know you were here for for the game, the Brighton game, wasn't mm. it? Um, of course, you've been and managed in in lots of different stadia. Mm. When you think of the King Power Stadium, when you think of Leicester City at home, mm. what do you think? What kind of atmospheres does does that evoke? Yeah, well, well I'm I'm so excited about the game because um, my experiences of coming here with Swansea and, and and with Liverpool and obviously watching from the outside in terms of the 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 atmosphere and the intensity in the uh, in the stadium when the when the team was going to to win the league, it was um, it was incredible. And and I feel that it's going to be so important for us, you know, that connection between the team and the supporters. You know, we have to be very much together. You know, it's the first steps of a really exciting journey for us, and and this has to be a really really tough place to come. You know, I I seen somewhere that in a calendar year I think the team have won about five games at home, and we have to change that. You know, this has to be a real tough place to come and play. There needs to be an intensity and a relentlessness to our game. Um, and it makes it really, really difficult for teams. So, uh, so that starts on Saturday, and uh, and I look forward to it. People are already warming to you. I said to you at, at Vicarage Road, it took the fans a minute and twenty seconds to to sing your name in that one. Uh, we do a program with Alan Birchnell, MBE. He's on his seven hundred fiftieth manager, uh, and he he said that he very much enjoyed enjoyed the time that he'd had with you in the last week, and and some of the staff. How important is that to create those bonds and and become part of a club quickly, to to immerse yourself in it, to yield results on the pitch? Do you think? Yeah, but I think what you learn with experience is that you can't do it on your own. I think that um, you know I have a presentation here with the with the staff after here, and uh, it's really talking about, it, about us being one club with one clear vision. And uh, and I think when you work that way and you can work together, uh, then it gives you a greater chance to succeed. So the team, the staff, the supporters, you know, I always think that together we'll be we'll be stronger and. Uh, yeah, the, the the staff, everyone's been brilliant since I've came, the help, the support. Um, and like I say, I feel really comfortable here. I feel as if I've been here, you know, a lot longer. Uh, and that's a, a huge credit to the, the city and to the, uh, the the people who work at the club. Does a meeting have a PowerPoint presentation? Does it have videos? Is it media interactive, Brendan? Or is it just a tub-thumping speech, respectfully? What, how, does it, how does it sound? Respectfully, uh, <laughs> You won't, I won't tell you. <laughs> Earlier on, you talked about playing to player strengths. You're a positive, play to a player strengths kind of manager. Mm. What are your group's strengths that you've discovered in the last ten days? Well, I think what we have is we we have we're very very good pace in the team, good power in the team. Um, we need to be better with the football. There's no doubt about that. Um, and, and especially, I think, but because of the the, the recent history of um, of Leicester City, most teams now, especially at home, will sit back and deny you space. Um, but we have to be a team that has to be able to play any type of game. If a team sits in deep, we have to have the patience, and that's where our supporters will be so important. You know, hopefully over time they'll understand that a back pass isn't a negative pass; it's a chance to start another attack and play forward. Um, but of course, the uh, I can see that we've got lots of many real good traits in the team in terms of speed, power, um, but we need uh, we want the creativity and that unpredictability in the team, and that's something that will grow hopefully over my time here. 
And finally, do you get involved at this stage with so few games until the end of the season in some of the, you've talked about recruitment and what you want to do. I'm thinking about player retention. There are some contracts up like the captain, Wes Morgan, yeah. Shinji Okazaki, Danny Simpson, Christian Fuchs. There's significant players, of course, yeah. because of, of what they've achieved. Yeah. Do you get involved in those conversations now and start thinking about that? Or because of the timing of your arrival, is is that something you're not getting involved with? No, I'm obviously interested in it. it it's it's important for me to understand the whole situation and the where where each player is at. Like you say, all those players, we have to respect their their, their great history here at the club and what they've achieved. But also, we have to also plan forward and and uh, as I said, and, and look to see where they can contribute. You know, but uh, but yeah, I'll speak with with John and and couldn't talk. Uh, and then we'll, we'll look to see where we uh, we go from there. Pleasure. Thank you. Hi, Brendan. Um, Hi. What's the atmosphere like in the dressing room and on the training ground? Are the players quite upbeat? Yeah, I find it so so refreshing because you never know sometimes when you come into uh, a new club. But, um, but yeah, I think from the first day, we set a clear vision of how we wanted to work. You know, the environment is very, very important. You know, the uh, that's where you set your standards every single day. And then you hope eventually when you create that standard and mentality that can come into the game. So, uh, yeah, I've just found a really young group of players, which I was aware of, um, with some really, really good experienced players around it. And uh, and like I say, it's it's a really exciting job here because of, you know, the improvements that I can see that we can make with the team. So, uh, so yeah, I think they've enjoyed the, the work. And uh, like I say, but we've we've still a, a lot of work to do. Um, I know I don't want to dwell on uh, the breaking because you have spoken mm. about it. I just want to know how are your family coping? How how are they? Yeah, it's obviously difficult, as you can imagine, for uh, for when it happened. You know, you, you could never imagine that, uh, as I said, you get broken into, and then the the the, the, the obviously the burglars into your into the bedroom with with my young daughter there. So um, so yeah, it, it, it's not nice. Um, but in fairness, like I say, the the support that they've been given, and um, and like I say, if it's an obstacle that you never want to to come across, of course. But if there's a positive with it, then it means that obviously they'll be down here that bit quicker. You know, we we loved our time in Scotland. We uh, uh, Lola, she absolutely loved the school that she was in there, Kelvin Side Academy, where the teachers were were amazing and all the the little pupils. And our plan was to keep them there to the end of the term and. And by that time, I should have bought a house down here and then they all moved. So this probably just makes that happen a little bit quicker now. So they'll be down for the weekend's game and then they'll stay down and um, go to find a house there. All right. Good luck. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks, folks. We'll go next door for the breakout. Okay. Thank you. Bye.